Shalom, people. This is Brother Lyles coming at you with another video. And we want to uh, just, you know, encourage all of you out there who are not participating in, in the pagan holidays that America upholds. We want to encourage you to be strong. We want to encourage you to know that uh, there's a scripture that says, we're not to follow a multitude to do sin. And so just because it is so many other people, including family and friends that you know that are participating in this, does not make it right. And and um, we, we've done these messages before, but we're going to just continue to do them because you, we know that uh, is a spirit that comes along with this season that weighs heavy on those that do not participate in it. You know, throughout the year, they talk about, um, you know, there's no other time of year that mankind shows kindness to each other. There's no other time during the year that mankind is more giving than during the, the Christmas season. But I submit to you that this is a spirit and it's not the spirit of Yah. It's not the spirit of Yeshua. It is the spirit of Tammuz. On the, the aspect of Santa Claus, which was introduced to it uh, later, uh, we know that some would say that Santa Claus would be akin to you reading a bedtime story to your children, something like Hansel and Gretel. They said it's just make believe. It's just a fairy tale. But Hansel and Gretel is not based off of uh, ancient deities such as uh, uh, Santa Claus and Krampus and all these. You can trace these back to deities. So this is the difference. But this goes back to the the uh, uh, 325 AD when the European powers took over the message of Yeshua and they wanted pagans to be part of this thing they call uh, Christianity and therefore they did what um, uh, the, the, our Bible had told us not to do it told us not to uh, have any other Elohims before Yah. And they made this thing of worship of Tammuz, and they switched Tammuz out for Yeshua. And therefore, the, the name of our lesson is the spirit of Yeshua against the spirit of Tammuz. They just took ancient worship and they switched it up, which, unlike, is, which is like most of the stuff that Catholicism and Protestantism does. They switched it up and then they brought in the doctrine of grace and they basically just co co covered it over with the doctrine of grace and said, um, uh, it, it is okay because we we said it is okay, but it's never been okay. But over the years, what, what happens is it builds up a tolerance to where we're at today that now that the most high is revealing everything and, and put people are pushing back against it it brings back a feeling of uncomfortableness to those that know the truth and are pushing back against it while those who are under the the spirit of tamus is they they don't see it as tamus they say it is yeshua and therefore we have this, this 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 battle that's going on that we're going to talk about today. We're going to first talk about the spirit of Yeshua, the spirit from the Father, coming from John 16. We're going to come from the book of John, the 16th chapter, and we're going to start at verse 1 because the spirit of Yeshua is the spirit of truth. Right. And he said he sent us the spirit, his spirit to do certain things. Right. The spirit that came from the father. This is John 16 and one. 
and said, these things have I spoken unto you, that ye should not be offended. That will put you out of the synagogue. Yea, the time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think that he doeth Yah service. And these things will they do unto you because they have not known the Father, nor me. But these things have I told you that when the time shall come, ye may remember that I told you of them. And these things are said not unto you at the beginning because I was with you. But now I go my way to him that sent me. And none of you ask me, whether goeth thou? But because I have said these things unto you, sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment and of sin because they believe not on me of righteousness because I go to my father and ye see me no more. A judgment because the prince of this world is judged. I have many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. Albeit when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you. Right? And so Yeshua said, when the spirit of truth comes, when the Holy Spirit comes, that proceeded from the Father and the Son, he's going to lead you into all truth. I submit to you that it was not the spirit of truth that led the Catholic Church to institute this thing called Christmas, the celebration of the birthday of Yeshua, because nobody knows his date of birth. And we certainly know that it was not in December. We know that for a fact. It was not the, the spirit of truth. It was not the Holy Spirit that led the Protestant church to gravitate toward this, back to this, because they supposedly had came out of Catholicism because of certain things that they said that they protested that the Catholic church was doing. But this was not one of them. This was also something that they continue to participate in. And therefore, I say, I submit unto you that it was not the spirit of truth. It was not the Holy Spirit that led uh, those that said that they believe in Yeshua to do this. And indeed, you, you find that um, at one time in this country, the celebrating of Christmas was outlawed because they knew the origins of it. Now, that's not to say that people didn't secretly uh, uh, um, uh, still participate in some kind of uh, uh, acknowledgement, all right? But there was no one that was going to argue with you uh, that the birthday of Yeshua was something that was mandated. And indeed, that if anyone be would believe that they knew the exact date, especially when that date coincide with the worship of Tammuz. Now, this is why I say it is the spirit of Tammuz that you're dealing with today. It was, it was the taking on of the Babylonian, continuation of the Babylonian empire. Because remember, Nebuchadnezzar's head was the head of, of gold. But that same spirit that started with Babylon came on down through um through Persia, into Greece, into Rome. And then when the Roman Empire received that deadly wound, right? But then it got healed. Then you had the, those 10 toes, right? Partly iron, partly clay, that, that is still empowered by the same spirit that started off in the, the head, the, the golden head of Babylon, Babylonian worship, which came from Nimrod. And we're going to read here a, a, um, a article online that uh, I found talking about Nimrod.
uh, talking about Tammuz. And and this is what this is what you are contending with when you feel the heaviness of not participating in it. This is not the spirit. This is not the Holy Spirit that's convicting you that you need to participate in these holidays. It's the spirit of Tammuz. And I'm going to go to that. And then we're going to we're going to come back and we're going to go to the book of Ezekiel. But at first, I want to I want to look, read this uh, article that I found online. Give me one second here. Here it is. And this article is coming from a place on the Internet called Hub Pages. And it's kind of hard to read who the author of it is, but the name, the title of it is Christmas is about the birth of Tammuz. It was uh, uploaded back in December 22nd, 2022. Now, what a lot of people always use to try to show that all these people that's getting this information about Christmas are nothing but Jehovah Witness, right? Or whatever they always try to use that that because they know that you know Jehovah witness you know is considered to be a cult by most but that does not mean that the information that they're putting out right is not correct so even when you get sources outside of Jehovah witness about you know Christmas and all these they always go back Back to the thing of you must be a Jehovah Witness, which I, I'm not. I'm a believer in Yeshua, Mashiach, and I know that there's only one way to get to the Father, and it's through Him. And I believe in the Spirit of, of Yah, I, the Spirit of Yeshua, because He comes, proceeds from both. And I believe that He will lead you into all truth, because again, He speaks of the things of Yeshua, and Yeshua speaks of the things of the Father, and these three are one. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to the article, and we're gonna start here. It says every year during the holiday season, millions of households celebrate Christmas holiday season based on ancient mythology and folklore. Many are unaware of the legend and history behind the traditions they celebrate. They say, and I'm just going to use the words, they say Jesus is a reason for the season. But what they do not know is that the reason is synonymous with another man God from ancient Babylon. And then it has a picture of Tammuz, the son of Nimrod and Semiramis, right? said Christmas is about Tammuz. The tradition of the season can be traced back to the celebration of the winter solstice. It is when the days start to become longer as the sun appears to rise higher in the northern hemisphere. In the occult world of ancient Babylon, there was a time to celebrate the return of the sun, symbolic of the reincarnation of Nimrod's son, Timros. And we know Nimrod was the builder of Babel, and we know he was in full rebellion against Yah. Now, um, before I read this article, I did have a book called uh, The Two Babylons by Alexander Hissop. And I, for some reason, I don't, I can't find it. I don't know if I gave it away or what, but uh, Alexander Hissop believes that Samaramus, right, right, which we're going to talk about her um, shortly, was the, the wife of Cush, which was one of the sons of Noah. He believes that. Some people in, in historians don't believe that. Some people said that he was mistaken, that um, it wasn't. And some don't even believe that Samar the Samaramus that um, um, we're going to talk about is the same Samaramus. And they believe that this Samaramus was, came later. I'm, I'm under the opinion that I believe that Samaramus um, Samaramus, as they call us, or Samaramus, as some would call her, was indeed the probably the wife of Cush, and that we know that Cush's son was Nimrod, and that. Um, so the, as we read that, just keep that in mind, right? But we're gonna we're gonna um, we're gonna keep reading. He said, according to legend, Samaramus supernaturally conceived and bore a son, Tammuz, on December 25th. Now, what 
what it is saying right is uh the the uh relations between samaramas and nimrod created the a a, a child called uh, uh tammuz right and um but it was supernaturally brought about by a a legend because what had happened was nimrod okay well actually let's let's go let's go let's keep reading let's keep reading it's a according to the legend simmeramus supernaturally conceived and bore his son tammuz on december 25th after the death of her husband nimrod she incestually married tammuz believing him to be a reincarnation of him Samaramas created the Babylonian doctrine of Tammuz, defining him, deifying him as a spirit being, claiming that an evergreen tree brought forth overnight from a dead tree stump, symbolizing the string springing forth of the spirit, bringing new life. Every year on the anniversary of his birthday, December 25th, he would visit the evergreen tree bearing gifts and it shows um some kind of uh relief that was on the babylonian walls that was supposed to be nimrod carrying gifts in his hand now like i said getting back to alexander hisop he believed that uh Kush was the husband of semiramis and that she had uh, that they gave birth to nimrod and that she she had relations with Nimrod, that Nimrod was her son, uh, um, that she had from Cush, but that she had relations with him. And that once uh, uh, Shem, which was one of the brothers, which was Cush's uh, brother, found out what they did, that he killed Nimrod, right? And hacked him up. But then miraculously, Semiramis got pregnant and she said she got pregnant from Nimrod from the rays of the sun because Nimrod had become the sun. So there's several different um, versions of this. I just read you one that said that they believe that um, Nimrod, uh, uh, you know, they didn't they didn't bring out part of Nimrod being her son they brought out the part of Tammuz being her son and that she married her son uh, uh, Tammuz right or whatever so I would say whichever version you want to adhere to the whole thing was pagan it was sick with whatever it was it it, it brought mankind back into worship of a deities right after the the flood right they they started going back in rebellion which is one of the reasons why you see that the tower of nimrod y'all came down and brought confusion and that's why if you go anywhere around the world you're going to find some kind of version of this thing of a mother child cult however you want to look at it right whether it was tammuz that was the, the 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 son they was talking about, or whether it was Nimrod. Either way, it is 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 uh, evil. But let's keep reading. It says here the birthday of Nimrod. He said Christmas is the birthday of Nimrod, and tradition of men was to go out in a forest and cut an evergreen tree, decorate it, and put gifts underneath it. This is historical. This is not nothing that is made up. And you can indeed see on the walls of the release of, of Babylon, you can see these trees that got decorations and stars on them because, you know, they was believing that, you know, Nimrod, you know, was coming back through this and then, you know, that the spirit of this uh, was when people, when the, when the Tower of Babel fell and people um, left out you know, going into their different places that the Most High had ordained them to go to divide the nations up because of their rebellion at the Tower Bible. You know, some of them took these things with them, but they just regurgitated them into their own belief, their own language or whatever. Um, 
and it says here, here are few, there are few, here are few Bible references. Okay, we're not going to read that. Okay, many fail to understand that worshiping uh, God in man-made worldly traditions is vain, is in vain. Many who direct their worship to Yah in this way are ignorant of the origins, traditions, and practices of Christmas that have been handed down from generation to generation. And then it just goes into talking about the Yule log and, and all these things. These things came later, right? I'm going to read this part. He said, the Christmas tree is the symbol of Tammuz, the spirit of Nimrod, who comes back to life again. The common image of a mother holding her child is not only pervasive in Catholicism, but also found throughout nearly every ancient culture throughout history. The green tree represents the incarnate son, Tammuz, reincarnated by the spirit of Nimrod. And then it talks about Santa Claus. I'm not going to talk about that. It talks about sun worship. Right, sun worship cultures all around the world. Right, talks about Egypt, talks about the meaning of Christmas, and then it says the lie perpetrated uh, by Christians during the Christmas season. Many invite people to their religious services. They say that Jesus is the reason for the season, but who, but who is also known as Tammuz by mimicking the pagans. They have also done throughout history, right? Uh, it is simple. Do the math. Tammuz is also called Jesus who comes in the spirit of Christmas. There should be no positive spiritual significance of celebrating Christmas as a means to worshiping Yah. Take a closer look at the depiction of the many nativity scenes with the sun disc. And that goes back to we shall we're not we were not supposed to make any graven images of things above in heaven or earth below that you were to bow down to and see this goes back to again when catholicism came in it did away with all that it said that the the, the commandments was done away with and we find ourselves in this sense but it is continue it's a continuation of it even into protestantism the spirit of Tammuz, right? And this is one of the things that got our people in trouble. Let's go back to the, the Bible. Let's go to Ezekiel um, in the Old Testament to show you that Tammuz worship is a problem that we have always had. Ezekiel 8, and we're going to start at verse 1. And it said, it came to pass in the sixth year, in the sixth month, in the fifth day of the month, as I sat in my house and the elders of Judah sat with me, that the hand of the master Elohim fell upon me. Then I beheld and lo, a lightness as the appearance of fire from the appearance of his loins, even down with fire and from his loins, even upward as the appearance of brightness, as the color of amber. And he put forth the form of an a hand and took me by a lock of my, my head and the spirit lifted me up between the heaven and earth and brought me in the visions of Yah to Jerusalem to the door of the inner gate that looketh toward the north where was the seat of the image of jealousy which provoketh to jealousy and we're going to skip on down to verse 14 and said and then he brought me to the door of the gate of the master's house, which was toward the north. And behold, there sat women, what? Weeping for Tammuz. Then he said unto me, Has thou seen this, O son of man? Turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see even greater abominations than these. So clearly, the Most High is saying any participation in any kind of worship of Tammuz is an abomination. And all Roman Catholicism and Protestantism did was switch up the name of Yeshua, knowing first and foremost that Yeshua's birthday is not in December. It probably will be closer to sometime in the spring, not 
but even then it's not known to us and it's not important to the most high for you to know when his birthday is right it is for you to believe that he came to uh, die for your your sins and for you to repent and to turn from this paganism he came to you to give you power to turn away from this but what they did was they said no we turn to give you power to continue to worship Tammuz, but we just going to change Tammuz's name to jesus or yeshua and you can continue to worship your Tammuz, but you just call him jesus because they wanted that power they wanted that continuation of the growth of Catholicism and all Protestantism did take on the same thing. But what they, the caveat they added was a, it ain't because the Pope said it was okay. It's because of grace. Grace says that let no man uh, 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 bother you about worship of different days and all these things or whatever. And they turned it around and said, therefore, if we are not to, uh, berate people about it but what 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 paul was was talking about paul was talking to the gentiles he was talking about um not, not only uh catholicism right i mean not only i'm sorry not only judaism in the 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 the, the, the different uh feast days and different things that he said that the pay that the 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 gentile believers did not know that the judaizers was trying to get them wrapped up into these things right um which with the jerusalem council already stated there was no need for them to to have to be re-immersed into judaism but they was trying to immerse them into these things and their own pagan holidays Paul was speaking on that behalf. He was speaking on that behalf that don't let these people get you caught up into getting into trying to do these different feast days. Don't let them get you caught up into trying to do continue on and doing your your pagan holidays that you were participating in. Don't let nobody hold you back in your service to the most high son, Yeshua be and say that this is part of what you got to do in order to have a relationship with the father through his son by continuing to be engrossed in these different uh jewish holidays and these different pagan holidays that's what he was talking about he wasn't saying that if you 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 did any kind of pagan holiday don't let nobody, you know, shame you. He was not, he was talking the direct opposite because these people had came out of pagan worship and the Judaizers were trying to bring them into the work, the observance of all these different things that the Jerusalem council had clearly said that the, the Gentile believers don't need to, to get mixed up in that because even Peter said, these are certain things that we ourselves, our ancestors, we could not keep these things right. Because indeed, that's why Yeshua came to show them how to even serve on the Sabbath. They was not doing it right. So clearly, he was not saying that we were supposed to go to either one. He was saying to be led by the Spirit. That's why John, Yeshua stated to the disciples in John 16, he said, he will he will lead you into all truth why because it was going to come a time that the temple was going to be done away with it was going to come a time because indeed there was no need now for the sacrifices and all these different things that they was doing but until that time came even some of our people were caught up into that even to the point of what happened with paul when paul was trying to continue to do those different things what happened when he went into the temple that's when he got jailed the first time because they said oh, why are you bringing these these people into the temple and they're not circumcised and all these different things. And so this is what he was talking about. He was saying, don't get caught up into these things. But what the Gentiles did once they took it over, they said they came and said, yeah, that's right. Don't do the these feast days, but do these holidays that we are going to recreate after Tammuz. Because if you look at Constantine, Constantine was not a believer. He was baptized on his deathbed, but it wasn't. It was only 
to 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 as a cover up all of this stuff and so all this stuff got transferred throughout Europe then when the European powers came came out into in the age of exploration or in the age of, of slavery I would say because they went around the world enslaving so many people they took these same things and they told he, they would tell these different cultures that they were going get rid of your pagan gods get rid of this and take on this and people took on the spirit of Tammuz so much so that you can see the celebration of Christmas all around the world. Why? Because it is the spirit of Tammuz. But remember, in the reading that I read from her pages, it said that everyone throughout the world had their own version of the mother child cult. And they had their own worship, veneration or worship of a deity that came out on December 21st. 25th. That's why it is even embraced by uh, people in the Middle East. That's why it's embraced by people in China. That's why it's embraced because they all, it all goes back to the Tower of Babel. It all goes back to Nimrod. It all go goes back to Simran, the Queen of Heaven. It all goes back to Tammuz because what was happening? It was the same thing that happened with Adam and Eve when they had Cain. She said, I have gotten a man or I have gotten the man from the from the master, from the Lord, because she thought that Cain was going to be that deliverer. And he turned out to be a murderer. So it's the same difference that happened with Samaritans and Nimrod when uh, 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 um, uh, uh, and he, he was he was killed. And then Samaritans had that child. She was trying to say. Tammuz is that deliverer that should come to you. He is the one. He is the he is the the anointed one from Yah from the Son, but from S U N, right? And he is, and that's why in in um in 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 Egypt you have Osiris and all those. It all points back to the Son. It all points back to Sun worship. It all points back to Babylon. And that's why it is such a strong spirit that you are dealing with. But the spirit of Yeshua, the spirit of the father is more than enough to sustain you during these times to 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 nullify. Because remember, like I said, at one time, even in the United States, the celebration of Christmas was illegal. Go back and read it because they knew. It was all, it was, this is an amalgamation of so many different things, Saturnalia coming from Rome, but the main is right now that we talking about is the spirit of Tammuz, the sun, man, God, who they switched uh, uh, him, him out and put Yeshua, just like they did the queen of heaven, Samaritans, they switched her out and, and made it Mary or in the Hebrew, Maryam, right? And this is this is why you you see that pretty much in all Central America, pretty much in all South America, Catholicism has a a a powerful grip. It has a powerful grip in Africa, even in the hot climate that they have. There is the participation in the celebration of Christmas. The spirit of Tammuz goes strong, even with their voodoo doctors and all that stuff that they got down there in Africa. They still participate in Christmas because it's the spirit of Tammuz. It is the time of the Gentiles, and there and the, and therefore it's still a grip on our people. But there, there were there are or some that have been breaking free from this. The celebration of Christmas to say, you know what, I will not be participating in this. But what does it bring? It brings on a spirit of of um anarchy, right? Against uh, uh, or rather your your loved ones believe there's a spirit of anarchy in you to um to not participate in this. They say it's sacrilege, right? When it's nothing but a tradition of men, even if we just took the pagan part out. That just take, that just say we would take it out about Tammuz and all this. And they just say, you know what? We just wanna, we just wanna make a celebration, right? Uh, during this time of year 
end of year, which again, we're going on their pagan holidays calendar. We're going on their calendar because this is their time. But let's just say we took it that away. And over time, people would almost take this and make it. Okay, sort of like the 4th of July. It's almost, that's definitely a tradition of men. But they were almost considered to be sacrilege if you don't participate in that because it is a tradition of men. And, and, and notice what you sure talks about, what the Bible talks about the tradition of men, what the problem with the tradition of men is. Let's go to Matthew uh, 15. Let's go to Matthew 15. And we're going to start at verse 2. Actually, we're going to start at verse 1. He said, why do, okay, let's say Matthew 15 and 1. Then came to Yeshua, scribes and Pharisees, which were of Jerusalem, saying, why do thy disciples transgress the traditions of the elders? Going back to the tradition of elders, something that was started by them. For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. But he answered, said unto them, why do ye also transgress the commandments of Yah by your tradition? Right. So what happens is men can deify their traditions to a point on the elevation with the commandments of Yah. And that's what had happened to this thing called Judaism, which is why Yeshua came to set it right, set it straight. But the people were so hardened into the traditions of men that they rebelled against the very son of Yah. I said, we don't want to stop doing these things. We don't want to stop. Indeed, it was the same thing when in the what we call the Old Testament, when the prophets and all those would raise up and tell them that Yah is not pleased with the things that y'all doing. The people would rebel and say, we want to continue worshiping the queen of heaven. So this queen of heaven worship, this mother cult worship has been a thorn in our side for a long time. Let's keep reading. He said. Uh, verse four, for Yah commanded, saying, "Honor thy father and thy mother." And he that cursed father or mother, let him die to death. But ye say, whosoever should say to his father or his mother, "It is a gift by whatsoever thou profit might have be profited by me," and honor not his father or his mother, he shall be free. Thus have ye made the commandment of Yah of none effect by your tradition. Right. So he's saying. Um, they they took and twisted the the scriptures about honoring the father and mother, and and came up with a money making scheme by saying if you pay a certain amount to them because they were religious heads, then they could change the law. And this is basically what Catholicism did. It it took and it, and it said, yeah, we know that Talmud was born on the twenty fifth, and we don't know the exact birthday, but we're gonna say that it is. And this is this is what we're gonna do to get the pagans to come in, and we we say it because our religious leader said, our Catholic priest said, our Pope says it, and then Protestantism came along and just added grace to that and say, oh, it's by grace that we're able to do all these things. It's by grace that we're able to con con continue in uh, fornication. It's by grace we're continue able to continue in idolatry is by grace that we continue to be able to lie it's by grace that we can just throw pretty much any scripture that goes against what makes us feel comfortable we can just throw it to the into the back and this is why you see the pope came out and did what and say you know what um it's okay now for you priests to go out and and bless LGBTQ marriages. Now, when I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm not crossing the line. I'm just saying that it is okay to bless them. But I'm not telling you you can marry them. But I'm telling you it's, it's a contradiction. And see, it, 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 it was, it, it was a bound to that to happen, right? Because of the facade, right? Of this, you know, godly priest and all these things. When you had all these lawsuits and all these different things as happening with these priests and little boys and little girls and in some cases women too uh that they've been messing around with and that's not even talk about um uh the the you know like i said the transatlantic slave trade where the, you know they would have during the middle middle practice the priests would come out 
in, in, in the slaves when they got to the middle passage of the Atlantic Ocean, they would come and, and bless the, the slaves and then give them a quote unquote Christian name. Let's not even get into all of this mess. But by the traditions of men, we find ourselves in this, this state right here. And, um, you know, I just don't you know, I, I don't think that is is productive to argue with people about it i think it's just good to give them the facts and just to to leave it like that and don't and just you know just say you know and understand that at one time you um didn't um know all these things and at one time you probably was one of the ardent uh followers of it at one time also and and therefore we gotta we gotta uh we gotta give we got to give grace to those that sincerely are, are still under the blindness of the spirit of Tammuz, but that we cannot, we cannot participate. We cannot condone. We cannot give our energy because it is traditional men. Look what Colossians. Um, let's go to the book of Colossians. Colossians uh, 2 and 6 is this. It says, uh, as ye have heard, as ye have therefore received, uh, Messiah uh, Yeshua the master so walk ye in him rooted and built up in him and established in faith as ye have been taught abounding therein with thanksgiving beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men after the rudiments of the world and not after, after Messiah Right. And so Paul, Paul again was here saying to the Colossians, he said, don't don't get caught up in tr the traditions of men. He was telling the uh, uh, after the rudiments of the, the the world, he said, don't get caught up in it. This this celebration of Christmas, the celebration of Easter, the celebration of Halloween. All these things are the traditions of men, of the rudiments of the what? world because the whole world participates in it do you un not understand like i said all this stuff goes back to the rebellion that started in babylon and it and it just rolled down and once when 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 yeshua came to to to, to show uh first his people which are, is our ancestors a different way right when he came to show them right then when the, the the when our people rejected that message and it went to the, the Gentiles, the Gentiles just took not all of them, not all of them, because it was some that did reject. And most of them that would reject probably would be burned at the stake or thrown to lions or sawed in half or whatever they did with them because they would not continue on worshiping these gods or whatever. They say, you know what? The best way to do this thing is to. That's deceive them and tell them that Yeshua is uh, that that, that Tammuz is, is Yeshua and all these and 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 that and that way the pagan continue to, with their paganism but they can just use the name of Yeshua or the name of Jesus instead. They they did this and they they went into all the different parts of the world and spread this out and now like I said it is a a spirit it is the spirit that is. Uh, uh, coming down on you of the spirit of Thomas is coming down upon you when you don't participate because it does not like that. It does not like to be shown up. It is the spirit of the devil. It is the spirit of demons. But Paul said don't get caught up in it because you was not established in it. You was not established in in, in the traditions of men. You was not established in the rudiments of this world. You was established in Yeshua. That's why the Bible says, study to show this thyself approved unto Yah, a workman that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing. Because when you go into a lot of these, these churches, when you go into a lot of these whatever, they're not going to talk about these different things. And indeed, I talk about it all the time. I talk about how, um, you know, the little, when I was in a particular denomination, had they had this little, little uh, black book. And in the black book, it talked about, 
you know, prohibitions against this and that or whatever. So then I would come back and I say, okay, so if we're not supposed to be doing this, dealing with these, why are we dealing with this? Because that's dealing with that different religion that you're talking about. And they were like, oh, no, you're not understanding and you're not rightly dividing the word. And and like I said, it was not really encouraged. It was encouraged you to go along with the status quo, right? Therefore, whatever the denomination here came down to the pastor, the pastor, denomination, spokesperson really whatever they said or, or whatever because he knew that if he he did not toe the line then you know he would be excommunicated or whatever and so again traditions of men and that's that's talk about what peter said about the traditions of men let's go to first peter uh four one and fourteen it says this, it says, as obedient children, not fasten yourself according to the former lust in your ignorance, but as he which has called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of con conversation, right? He said, as, um, as is written, be ye holy for I am holy. And if you call on a father who with our respect the person judge according to every man's work, pass the time of your sojourning here in fear for as much as you know you were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by traditions from your fathers but with the precious blood of your um, uh, messiah as of a lamb without blemish and without spot so paul uh, peter was saying here you wasn't redeemed by the silver or gold right one of the big religious things of the year outside of um outside of easter is with the christmas day is the christmas service where you go and they'll probably do communion and pe people are like okay i'm good because i do i did you know i went to church at the last you know i went to church on christmas the last month of the year you know probably might be the last service for that year or whatever i'm good i'm good until the next year or really good um until you go New Year's Eve and party and get drunk and bring the New Year and the drunken orgies or whatever or whatever. And he said, P Peter was saying, uh, uh, um, you was not redeemed by the silver gold or the vain conversation we re received by the fa fathers. And then Paul, my P P Peter was talking to the um, talking to a, a a hebrew audience when he was saying so he was talking about these drain traditions that the scribes and pharisees had brought but this can equate to the, the those in the gentile world with this thing of tamus right which i like i said re, uh they just replaced tamus with yeshua he said you wasn't redeemed by Tammuz, you wasn't redeemed by these different traditions. You not redeemed like you. Mind you, got a Christmas tree. Mind you, giving out presents. Mind you, participating in secret Santa. Mind you, doing. He said you're not re you're not redeemed by none of this stuff. You don't need to participate in any of this stuff to show that you are a believer and you're sure. This stuff is traditions of men, of the rudiments of the world, and has probably brought so much devastation financially to our people. To break themselves during this time when we should not to mention that this is on a different calendar than what we we are on anyway but it's just a participation in winter solstice celebration time of the spirit of tammuz that we're not supposed to. and it's one of why a lot of people in our community start off the the pagan new year broke because it's not of the most high it is the spirit of tammuz and the Bible said the hell is never full. The devil will never be satisfied if if, if 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 he doesn't have everybody. Now, again, like I said, there are some that uh they're blinded, and, and you gotta <clears throat> you gotta pray and be patient with them because it, it just like with you, like I said, <clears throat> you probably was a die heart follower of a christmas defender of christmas i i kind of when i was out there i kind of had a feeling that it was something about it but i felt because my denomination and my pastor and pr pretty much everybody was doing it, i felt well you know maybe grace will cover this i'm not really you know i wasn't really concerned about it again because i like i said i was feeling that if 
all these other Christians are doing it. And the pastor, you know, he, you know, and, and they would, they would have, you know, very uh, elaborate ways where they would tell you, yeah, people come up to you talking about Christmas is a pagan holiday. Just tell them blah, blah, blah. This is a time, time for witnessing and different things. I was like, ain't nobody. Yet. I would think myself, ain't nobody really about witnessing and anything. Cause I remember one time and my wife was really mad with me about this. It was this church that we was going to, um, was it, I think, it was uh when we was in Germany, however it was, and the pa and the, and the pastor, you know, and at that time we was to be honest though, we was we was kind of broke at that time anyway. We didn't have a lot of money. I don't think we even had enough money to get a Christmas tree. But my wife had some things that she wanted, she she wanted to, to get for I don't know. I, I don't even think we had did we have our son Leon at that time? I'm not sure, but whatever it was. Right, everybody was going. Uh, I know what it was. The pastor had um, he had said, "Well, we're gonna come back at such and such time." He said, "I know some of y'all gonna be out there Christmas shopping, but I'm not telling you it's okay to be out there. You need to be back in church this evening." So me and my wife, you know, we want to be, you know, well, I'm just no, I ain't gonna say my wife. I don't say myself because I was drinking the Kool Aid. I'm saying my wife was like, you know, I did want to go to so and so. I said, baby, we gotta we gotta go back to church. You heard what the pastor said. She said, but everybody's gonna be out there shopping. They ain't gonna be coming back to church. I said, but but we ain't everybody. So my, my stupid self, it was some it was some people that came back, right? But and and I, you know that thing, and I think we came back, and my wife she was hot. Cause when we got there, it was some people, but the majority of the people, including the pastor's wife, was not there. They was out Christmas shopping. My wife was hot, and we got. I said, like, "I told you we should have been." Done. I was like, "Yeah, I, got I really couldn't argue." And that's why like I said when I seen, I start this little things like this. Start let me say, you know what? Something is not right about this whole thing with Christmas, man. This is not, you know. And then of course they was trying to bend it and say, "Well, you know, Jesus is a real real." for the season it's been destroyed by commercial uh commercialism no it was pagan from the very beginning the very worship of tao moves right in the name of yeshua was wrong in the first place that's why it dissolved to what it is now and i'm here to tell you that you know uh you that heaviness like i said you feel when you you know you you your kids see other you see your kids see other kids running out in the street with their toys and their bikes and all these even though you get these stuff for your kids throughout the year you you probably give your kids everything they want and then some it's something about that this time of year that they say you need to participate you, you you're stunning your children's growth and all these other kind of things you, you your family members are disown you and tell you now understand there is cultism right in some of the the denominations and stuff that don't celebrate and Jehovah Witness and all that. We know that 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 whatever. But when you look, like I said, at a multitude to do sin because so many quote unquote Christians follow it, they say that anybody else that's not in it, even if you're not calling yourself a Jehovah Witness, oh, you're a pagan, right? Because you know that Jesus is the reason for the season, even though when you say he was not born on, I don't want to hear that. I want to hear that. They're like, ah! I don't want to hear it. I want to hear it. I'm telling you, this is this is this should set off alarm bells to you. But be strong. Be be strong. One one day, think about this. When Yeshua comes to set up his uh, uh, government here on earth, there's there's gonna be human beings that's gonna bring into his kingdom the knowledge of this Christmas stuff. And it's going to probably be, I guarantee you, it's going to be people, even at that time that Yeshua is here on earth ruling, that's going to rebel. Why? Because of the spirit of Talmud. Even if he himself, which he, through us, has said that, but even when Yeshua himself would probably come out and say, this is not a most high, the Father is not okay with this, this will not be tolerated on my gov government here on earth. There's going to be some people. People that's going to secretly still do it. Why? Because it is of the devil. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. But right now, right, you that don't want to do it are suffering. And I would say to you, so what? 
you know, to suffer just a little ridicule. Think about what the Savior went through. Think about what he went through with the scribes and Pharisees and all them when he came against their traditions, right? Think about how he felt. But they went beyond that. They killed him over this. All you had to do is deal with a little ridicule from your family, right? Nobody's killing you over not participating. Ain't nobody coming and putting you out of your house because you don't have no Christmas decorations on your uh, house and you ain't got no tree in your living room. Ain't nobody putting you out because of that, right? Let's go to Philippians. We 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 got this thing mixed up when it talks about suffering, right? Right. We can't we can't deal with we can't really deal with nothing really right now. Let's actually let's go to James. Let's go to James five, and we're gonna um uh five and ten. It says, "My brethren, take my brethren the prophets who have spoken in the name of the master." For an example of suffering, affliction, and patience, behold, we count them happy which endure. Ye have heard of the patience of uh, Job, and have seen the end of the master, that the master is very pitiful and of tender mercies, right? So he's saying, look at, look at what the prophets had to go through. They had to go be chased out in the wilderness when they were speaking out against the people, what they was doing in the land of Israel, all the wickedness that they was doing. Uh, think about you know, Jeremiah, when he was coming against all the wickedness that they was doing, what they did to him, right? He And he said, I, you know, I'm a prophet of the nations, but the nations won't hear what I got to say, right? And his, even his own family tried to kill him because of the things that he was saying. We have not got to that point. We just got people that's coming against you and ridiculing you for not participating in there, but you're not suffering unto death this is what acts five and um this is acts um five and 41 this is when the the, the apostles and them had been uh uh suffered persecution uh through the jewish sanhedrin uh, verse 41, he said, and they departed from the presence of the council rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name, right? And so he said, they, they counted it worthy. And they said, so count it worthy that you uh, uh, you, you suffer a little bit of ridicule for not participating in this thing. Count it, count it joy, right? No, I mean, not like you happy that your kids feel that, but it, it's, it's, a, it's a light affliction. It's light affliction. Acts 9 and 41 said that he gave his hand and um see uh um you no know, we ain't gonna go there. Um we're going to we're gonna go to um Romans. We're gonna go to Romans 8 and 17. It says this. It says, and if children, then heirs. Okay. We're going to go to verse 16. He said, the spirit, going back to the spirit. So the spirit itself bear witness with our spirit that we are the children of Yah. Does the spirit bear witness with you that you're still the children of Yah, even though you're not participating in Christmas? Then you're okay, right? In verse 17, and if children, then heirs, heirs of Yah, and joint heirs with M Messiah. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may also, may be also glorified together. So he says, suffer a little bit down here, because one day you're going to be glorified. And all those people that told you, oh, man, y'all missing out, your children missing out. But like, you know what? The greater glory is when I, you know. Uh, rise and he even he said you you can suffer even in this time and still receive a reward so you don't have to always wait until then but think about it right like i said the little suffering that you go through the really kill right and like i said it's not like you can't get your kids now the main reasons most people like to participate in the christmas holiday season is definitely that a lot of stuff is marked down during that time. And so 
the 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 line is okay if you already have what you need for the year are you going to just because the prices are low just go out and buy all this stuff right i would say to you if you bought gifts for people back in september and gave them to se- them to september would they be angry with you because because you didn't wait to December to give them the gifts, I would say to you, that's these are some of the things that you need to think about. This is why I'm saying it is a spirit. But the devil, like I said, he's going to make every option for you to participate by, again, like I said, having them to mark things down. But the time is going to come, right, to the most high. And we already see it with this inflation that it doesn't matter. Stuff is still high, right? And so he's going to take that away. Right now, like I said, we, we see that 2024 is going to be a, a very rough year. And so it would behoove you not to try to start the new year off in poverty, falling behind these holidays because the time is going to come. Like I said, even with me and my wife, when we we even at one time wanted to celebrate the Christmas and wanted to have a tree, we couldn't even afford a, a tree. You understand? And and it made us quote unquote feel really bad, right? But do you feel that bad when you sin? That's why I said it's a, it's a spirit. It is a spirit, especially when Paul told us not to get upset over these these days, right? But it always goes back to the children. And we get ready to end with this. Remember what our ancestors said when the spies came back, the 12 spies came back with the the report of the land. They said, the land is good. But those giants, those sons of Anik, man, we, we like grasshoppers before them, man. And the land will consume us and our children. Right. And then they got mad at Moses and said, why you bring us out here into the desert for us and our children? And so, so it was always about the children. But y'all say, you know what, Moses, it's not about the children. They just wicked. They want to go back to Egypt. They want to go back. To, he said, you know what? Um, They ain't going into the land. They're going to wander for 40 years. And they're like, no, no, no. We want to go in the land. I said, nah, you ain't going in there. And they so of course you know they tried to go on the land and the and and the giants came and they actually did chop them down to size, and then he said and those children they children that they said because they said that they was fearful for them he said they children gonna see the land they're gonna go, go into the land but they ain't gonna go into the land it's the same thing with this Christmas oh you know it's, it's, it's for the children or whatever but like I said. Just you, you gotta, you, you, we, 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 we gotta be willing to tell the truth. We gotta be willing to suffer a little bit. And again, and you know, I say, if you're getting your kids every what they need throughout the year or whatever, what is the difference? This, this, it, you, you're, in, you're putting your children into the spirit of Tamils again. And this is why, like I said, um, we, we got to be willing to. Be patient, yeah, with those that don't that that have not come to the knowledge of that. But we got to be steadfast and immovable in this thing. And so with that I'm gonna again, like I said, encourage you, be be strong. And if somebody you know you know say happy holidays or whatever, I mean it's up to you if you want to return back to them to say I don't celebrate the holiday or just keep it moving. I basically use just keep it moving. And, uh, you know, you go over to somebody's house or whatever. And you, like I can say if, it, if it's the only time that you can get with your family. I can understand that. But you still need to let them know what your real understanding of what this thing is about. And if they say, why aren't you? I got you all this. You need to tell them before they go and buy all, all these expensive gifts for you that I don't participate in it. And if you get, you know, it's up to you. But I'm not. I'm telling you. I don't I don't participate in it. So it's not going to be in kind that you're going to be expecting me to give you something because especially definitely if I gave you something throughout the year, but definitely not in the participation in the spirit of this time. That's why, um, you know, I, I, I said it's good to let people know up front. 
So with that, I'm going to ask you to give this video a thumbs up. I'm going to ask you to leave a comment. I'm going to ask you to subscribe. I'm going to ask you to be encouraged because Yah understands what you're going through. Be back.